Hey there, my friends. So, uh, the name of the game today is Atomics. Um, namely, these orientations of planes where they're not flush. That is, they're not in parallel planes. They can be at a slight angle or they can be at a very extreme angle. It all depends. Um, a lot of you eagle-eyed viewers out there will note that this particular atomic arrangement I'm playing with right now, wherein both of my uh, planes are vertical and offset by 90 degrees. I can switch it straight up into wall and wheel plane if that makes it easier to see uh, kind of what's going on here. Um, from one perspective this looks like it is same time same direction but if I were to rotate it around say here it's going to look more like it is same time opposites. This is uh, an atomic arrangement that uh, Arashi likes to call crane. I was reminded of it recently when I uploaded um, a video of him teaching class at Fire Drums and he was specifically talking about this atomic arrangement. Uh, he hinted that there were other atomic arrangements and I don't know why, I've been trying to figure out what they are the past few months and when I watched this video something clicked into place for me and uh, if I'm right about what it suggests, then it suggests that atomic arrangements are actually way simpler than, we, than, uh, than I had originally thought. Um, when I saw Rashi performing this move in the video, it suddenly struck me that I had seen that orientation before. Specifically, uh, last January, I was hanging out with uh, Noel and Mikey up in Philadelphia, and Mikey was taking us through this concept that he had of determining timing and direction for um, atomic uh, movement inside of an octahedron, and specifically when it came to things like clubs and, uh, and, and moving hands through them and the like, right? Um, his three combinations were together L, split L, and infinite L. Uh, and these are actually self-explanatory, because what they'll do is they'll alternate between moments where uh, the two hands slash the two poi will come together and then split into an L, come together, split into an L, or split apart, come into an L, split apart, come into an L, split apart, come into an L, or just be in an infinite L series. This is what they look like. If I'm going to do together L, I would, uh, in a similar fashion to this, I would kind of start off with my arms at a right angle to each other. They come together, they split off into an L, they come together, they split off into an L, they come together. They split off into an L, they come together. And I'm being consistent about my planes in there. That is, each hand is, is staying within its own single plane. If I go to split L, I'm coming to a perspective where uh, my hands are spread out as far as they can go. Then I go into an L, spread out, 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 L spread out L. And of course, last but not least, there's infinite L, where I would go L, I do have that right, L, L, yes, L, 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 right? Okay, so let's take this example of crane for a second. And as I mentioned before, um, crane can look like same time, same direction from one perspective, but if I switch to a different perspective, it looks like same time opposites, right? It, it looks like that's the observer, too. So if I wanted to, I could move around in a complete circle staying in, uh, in crane. If I wanted to think of, you know, normally when uh, we're spinning, especially in 2D kind of space, we have, say, a cross plane on the side of our body, a cross plane on this side of our body, and we're switching between planes that are in front of and behind us uh, if, if we're working in, in wall plane. Whereas we could, if we wanted to, split off the planes such that one was on either side of us and one was in front and back of us, right? So it's the same idea, we're just switching around uh, which hand is doing which plane, in which case you can, nav you can navigate around crane by switching between it looking to you like it's going same time, same direction, to it looks like it's going same time opposites, same time, same direction, reverse direction the one you started with, and same time opposites, reverse of that direction, right? And then you come right back to home base, you can navigate through it reverse, 
you can go back and forth. Oops. You can go back and forth as you see fit. And what's cool about this is that it teaches your hands and poi where they need to be in each of these different perspectives in order not to tangle. We can take it a step further and say move to a position right above us, in which case we're dealing with crane from another perspective. And the beauty of uh, working inside of a geometric framework like this is we can take this octahedron where I'm playing with a point here, point here, point here, point here, point here, point here, and we can rotate it over on its side such that the atom is now oriented in such a way that I'm dealing with a vertical and a horizontal plane right here. This is still crane, it's just crane seen from a different perspective, in which case Some of this is still sketchy, by the way. In which case, I now have these orientations to work with. And once again, it's just a matter of traveling around to all those different perspectives and figuring out where I have to stick the point in order to not tangle there, right? So, if I'm not mistaken about this, it essentially means that there are only three atoms that we can play with and a multitude of perspectives on those atoms. And one of the great ways that we can practice those atoms then is to navigate through each of the octahedral positions of it and rotate the octahedron around in a number of different ways to make sure that we're getting all the possible perspectives that we're likely to be playing with. Of course, there are an infinite number of perspectives, but this kind of narrows down the field a little bit and gives us a little bit more to play with. So, for example, if I wanted to, I could also play with split L which um, from this perspective is going to look like split time opposites. But I can rotate my plane in such a way that it's going to look like split time same direction. Once again, all I have to do is navigate between my different perspectives right here. And it will give me all the different combinations I'm likely to have to deal with. Nifty, huh? And once again, all I'm doing is taking these standard planes that we usually work with, but say cocking one, oh, just a little bit off, and realizing that that means that when I do cross points from here on out, I'm only doing cross points at one poi at a given time. And that will give me the freedom to move through the atom in different ways. And of course, you know, as you're playing around with this, you look up and there's a vertical versus uh, horizontal element to play with too. Oops. And the challenge of working out where each of those atoms is going to be. And how they mesh up. Um, Infinite L, uh, you, you might notice I haven't played with it just yet. It's because it's kind of wonky when, when, when performed in this method. Um, we have split L, we have together L, infinite L looks like quarter time. But once again, it's just a matter of working your way through the app. So, those of you guys out there who are atomic freaks, write me back on this one. Um, can we really distill all atoms into these three shapes and just practice all the different perspectives of them? Or is there something I'm missing here? Is there, is there something I'm leaving out? Um, yeah, either which way. Thank you guys for watching and uh, have fun practicing this one. I know I have been. And uh, have yourselves a great week. Peace.